So just like when it comes to any other hobby, usually the first question that people ask artists are what tools do you use? And professional art materials can get quite expensive, especially when you're in the realms of oil painting where a small tube of paint can cost a fortune. And even if you're just doing drawing, which is considered one of the cheaper options in creating art, these pencils can really add up over time and the pencils can start costing a lot as well. My usual advice for beginners is just to use what you have available to you and it doesn't really matter that much because in the beginning it's all about getting through the door and learning the basics. It's not until later on where you start developing your own style and trying out new techniques when materials actually start mattering and it becomes more important what kind of tools you use. But you didn't click on this video for me to tell you that materials don't matter at all. You're probably asking, you know, if it's not important, then what's the difference? Today, we're going to the general store to find the cheapest pencil possible and then going to a arts and crafts store to see if we can find the most expensive pencil on sale. And then we're going to compare them to see if there is a really big difference between cheap and expensive pencil and if the price tag is really worth it. Okay. So now we're at Walmart and I found these pencils. They're wooden 2B pencils that are 24 for a dollar. So it comes out to about five cents per pencil. And I remember using these in school when I had the exams because you had to use these in order for the scanners to work for some reason. Now we're going to a special art store to see if we can find any specialized pencils to see if we can have this be. So now we're at Michael's, which is a arts and crafts store that we have nearby. And the most expensive pencil that I found here was the Faber-Castell 9000 series. They don't have the pit mat ones on sale right now, so those might be more expensive, but this is the most expensive one that I can find. These are $2, which might not sound like a lot, but it's 100 times the cost of a pencil that we got from Walmart. So we're gonna get a 2B one, which is the same as the shade that we got from Walmart. So we can have a fair comparison when the only thing that differentiates them is the brand and I guess the quality. So first off, let's do some side-by-side -side comparison. We're going to be doing a darkness and erase test and we're going to be doing this all in sketchbook paper, which is something that is widely available and you don't have to worry about it being unpurchasable in your country. Now they're both 2B pencils, so they should be exactly the same shade. I'm going to be pressing down as hard as I can to see how dark I can get them to be. Let's start out with the number 2 pencil. Now the favorite castell pencil. Now, as you can tell, these look basically exactly the same to me, and it's no surprise because they're both 2B graphite pencils, which should be exactly the same. Now I'm gonna start erasing them because it's inevitable that you will mess up no matter how great of an artist you are. And I'm gonna be using a pink eraser because I find that this is the cleanest erasing eraser for large portions. First off, the number two pencil. Now the favorite castell. Now the favorite castell seems to have done a little bit better during this test because I tried pressing down as hard as I can for both the darkness and the erasing test. And obviously they're both still there because I did press down really hard and it's almost impossible to get it fully out. The favorite castell seems to have gotten erased a little bit better than the number two pencil. So it was a tie in darkness test, but Faber castell won the erasing test by a little bit. Now we are going to do a smoothness test, which is heavily affected by what type of paper you have, but for the sake of the test, we're going to be using, you know, the normal sketchbook paper. Now I'll be keeping the pressure the same, which is the usual pressure that I use for my drawings, and I'll be using different type of techniques like hatching, cross hatching, and shading to see how smooth the lines come out. We're going to be labeling these as well. Now some basic hatching. Now cross hatching.
And finally, some shading. Now for Faber Castell, we're going to be doing exactly the same thing. Now it might not be too obvious from far away, but if you look very close up, you can definitely tell that the Faber-Castell is a lot smoother. I don't know if it's the way that it's sharpened. Now moving on to the blend test, when creating realism drawings, one of the most important elements to making a drawing look realistic is the shadows and the shades. And one way to achieve that is using blending materials such as Q-tips, tissue paper, paper blenders, or even your fingers. And the general rule for this test is the easier it is to blend, the easier you will have the time drawing. Now let's start off with the number 2 pencil. Now the favorite castell pencil. The difference for this test is a little bit more obvious because the Faber-Castell seems to have gotten blended a lot better than the number 2 pencils. The lines that I originally drew are not as clearly shown. Now of course, this depends on the pressure of the pencil and the type of paper that you're using, but if everything is the same, Faber-Castell wins the test again. Now finally, we're going to be doing a realism eye, half with the cheap pencil and half with the expensive ones. Starting off with the 2B pencil, it feels a little bit like a challenge to me to only draw using one pencil as well. I remember when I was first learning to draw the still life drawings, I would only use 2B pencils because I didn't really see a point in using the other pencils since I thought 2B was right in the middle. It would cover the light, middle, and dark tone, so why not go through the trouble of switching between pencils so often. Nowadays, I don't really think I could finish the entire portrait I feel confident in without using at least five different values of pencils just because of the range that I know I'm able to achieve with them nowadays. Now onto some darker parts. As we know from the darkness test a little bit earlier, there's not that huge of a difference in the darkness of the tones. But I do feel like I have to press a little bit harder for the number 2 pencils than the Faber-Castell ones to achieve the same pure darkness that I have to get. For smaller details, I need to make sure that we get our pencils really sharp. Now for these, sometimes I would use a 0.35mm mechanical pencil because the graphite is extremely thin so I don't have to constantly sharpen them. Now onto the other half of the drawing, if we get out our number 2 fabric style pencils, again I'm going to try to do the exact same thing by getting a layer of graphite down for the first layer and putting some darkness on where the shadows would normally be to make it a lot easier on myself later down the road. Now I realized during this process that blending has become such an important part for these really quick, really easy drawings where I don't have to put in a lot of hyper-realism details like the pores. Now just comparing the first initial layers of graphite, you can clearly tell the difference. The Faber-Castell is much more even in the way that it's blended and smoothed out. It's not losing a lot of different tones and values in the process. And during this process, I'm using the eraser and a mechanical eraser to lift up a lot of the highlights and put out some little tiny details. And for the iris itself, I am actually surprised that the favorite castell is darker if it's compared really side by side. I don't know if it's because of the pressure that I'm putting down or I did something differently for the test earlier, but it definitely saves a lot of energy in the long run. 